All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use product set IDs in a uh, new SKU feed. If you have never compiled a new SKU feed, I would suggest you watch the other video um, going over uh, more detailed information on the new SKU feed. Um, this video is going to focus primarily on the product sets and how to do them. And what a product set ID is, it simply groups similar products together. So for instance, this jacket, there are two different colors and four different sizes. And on our marketplace, the way you um, create pages like this, you have to create a, a SKU for each, um, for each color and size. So since I have two colors and four sizes, I would need to create eight SKUs, uh, eight new SKUs to create that in our system. So what you're going to want to do is log into your seller tools and click upload new SKU feeds and go to the bottom where it says marketplace new, new SKU feed templates. And in this example, I'm going to be creating a product set for the clothes and shoes taxonomy. But if you were to use the product set in other categories, this, this example um, functions exactly the same. So you're going to want to do a few things. First, you're going to want to open the category attributes. I suggest to open these twice. You're going to want two of these category attributes pages opened, and I will show you why in just a little bit. You're going to also want to download the template for the taxonomy you're using. I'm using clothes and shoes, so I need the clothes and shoes template. I'm going to save it to my desktop. And the new product feed specifications are here if you need to reference them. If you forget um, what the GTIN field is, this would show you um, what that is. And it, it, you should be familiar with this. If you're not, I would suggest to watch the other video going over how to compile a new SKU feed. And the creation guide is simply uh, the text version of walking you through how to create a new SKU feed. So let's go ahead and open the template I just downloaded. There we go. This is the template for clothes and shoes. And make sure you have these category attributes ready to go because we will need these in this in the feed. All right. So I am making uh, two different colors and four different sizes so I need I will need a total of eight new SKUs in this uh, new SKU feed so let's go ahead and do that my seller ID eight times the GTIN field this is for the UPC um, if your products have UPCs you need to put that here if they do not you need to request a UPC exemption from our integration team um, in this example I have a UPC exemption um, for my test products I'm going to upload um, but if you were to make your own products and you don't have UPCs, you, if you make this feed and submit it to us without the exemption, it will err. So you need to request the UPC exemption if you do not have one. Manufacturer name is Brooks. Manufacturer part number, I have these all ready to go just to make this go faster. But these are all required fields and that's why I'm filling them out. Seller SKU. Also required title. Now for my title, I'm going to show you what it is. Uh, I do not need to include the color, the size, or the gender because that's what the drop down menus are for. That's what these are for. So you do not need to include green and large in the title because that's it's gonna it's gonna show here and then they can look at the product attributes to see what the gender is. So for my products I do not need to include the title or I'm sorry the uh, the gender uh, color or size. Description it's the same description for each product because it's the same one just different colors so I'm going to copy and paste that. Oops. Top. 
Now the main image, um, I am using, I'm going to create, sorry, four white jackets and four red ones. So, but my first four are all white. So I'm going to paste that there. And the second four are all red. Now this is important because if you mess up the images, um, you're going to have to go back and edit them. And the way you do that is also through the feed. Um, so if I were to include the white image for the red product, people would view my listing and they would say, okay, blue, small, but if I compiled it incorrectly and shoot and show the red jacket, they might be a bit confused. So just make sure your images, your images are right. You can add additional images and between each URL you need to add uh, the pipe symbol. I don't have additional images for my products here, but if you did, you could put them here. My weight for all my products is simply one. Features, I have these already. Features are also separated by pipe, and what uh, what the pipe symbol does, it simply uh, makes a new bullet point. So I will show you what my features are. So you can see I have polyester, pipe symbol, windproof and water resistant, pipe symbol weighs um, you know, 4.3 ounces, that's the medium size, and each pipe will make a new feature, a new bullet point feature. Um, so if it, that's why it's very important to use the pipe symbol to separate, uh, separate your features. The listing price and MSRP need to be the same, so make sure um, you put the same M uh, listing price and MSRP. This is not, I repeat, this is not going to be what the what you are selling the item for on our marketplace. Uh, this is simply the MSRP of the item. Now, um, I would suggest, as I'm going to do it now, to save your um, save your work as you as you move along in case something happens and you don't lose all the data you just inputted. So we're just going to save this as Brooks. Jackets. And I'll do the date. And this is just to you know protect yourself from if, some, if your computer crashes. It's just good habits. And category ID. This is where the product set stuff actually starts. So go ahead and go to the category attributes. I had you open two of them, and you'll see why right now. So you're going to want to sift through the uh, category. Um, taxonomy category and find what you're selling and you'll need to put the um, numbers the category ID associated with your product I happen to know my category ID but if you didn't you would simply just keep scrolling and look for uh, look for what you're selling so I'm selling jackets so my category ID is 77 so I'm simply gonna put 77 in all of these columns Keywords, um, you do not, we don't use them anymore, so you can leave keywords blank. Product set ID, this is the very, very, very extremely important part. Um, this is what groups your products together. So if you look at this example here, when I created the, uh, this new SKU feed for the for this for these jackets, I use the same product set ID um, to group them. So for example. The product set ID, you can just make it up. It's whatever uh, whatever you want to do, but you need to make sure it's the same. So let's say if I want if I did if I mess this up and I did different product sets for the different colors, it would not be grouped up as this as this is. It would have red, and then it would have the the, the drop down. But if you wanted different colors to show up you need to group them uh, the same. So I, I want them to all be in the same. So I am doing Brooks LSD2 for all, for all of them. That's very important. So the product set ID is what actually groups the products together. Very, very important. Now moving on to why I opened two of these up. You want to have one of your 
uh, uh, category attributes focused here, or um, where I highlighted, because we have category attributes which are required, and those are shown with the square brackets or these guys. And since it says color, you're going to want to go to your other um, category attributes page and scroll down to the bottom where it says attributes and this will show you what is allowed in the column so the first one is color and these are all alphabetical so let's find color and it says enter any string value this means you can put uh, any color you want so if you had a color that you know that's a little different so if you have like um, snow white probably a bad example um, but if you if you if you had your own color your own custom color you could put that in the in the in the column here if it were to say let's pull it up um, whoops here if it were to say color class you for the color class column you could only choose one of the following you know beige black whoops uh, beige, black, blue, brown. You couldn't use your own snow white um, color. And when it, since it says enter any string value, we're able to do that. So for this example, let's just do it. First four were white. And the second will say um, American red or Americana red because that's what REI said it was the next required attribute is gender and you can see here the square bracket that's required so let's scroll down to gender and see what we have to put in the gender column It is sorry. So you're going to want to choose one or more of the following values. Mine are male. So let's find the gender. There it is. And these are simply all male. Now this is a good example of you have to put one of these two in the. Um, one or more of these. So if you had, if you were to input boy or guy, it, it wouldn't, it, it, the feed would error. You have to put male or female. If it's both male and female, you would simply use the caret. You would do male caret symbol, which is shift six, and then female. That's how you would do the unisex, or if it's for both. In this example, I'm not doing that. It's just all male. The next required attribute is size as indicated here with the square brackets now I'm going to go over what these um, fancy brackets or braces are um, in just a second so let's go down to size and see what the accepted um, values are in size any string value so that means you can put whatever you want in size I'm going to do, I have small, medium, large, and extra large. Now, moving back to the required attributes here, um, these fancy brackets or braces, these are what create the drop down menus. So if you're watching this video and you and you're not doing this specific category ID, you're doing something else that has and you want to know if you can do drop down menus. If it has these symbols where it says color and then those little fancy ones, um, those will create drop downs. If it doesn't have that it, it doesn't um, it won't make the drop down menu. And the square brackets simply mean that's what's required. Now for this category ID 77, we'd recently changed it, so I'm using an older documentation 
um, you'll see it, ha it has one more uh, square brackets and you know, I would need to choose one of these um, but we, we have such changed this so I do not need to do that um, if you don't know or you think your your feed is done you can always validate it yourself and see if you get an error if you get an error it'll tell you what line erred and why it erred so let's say I, I skipped this step and I needed that one more category attribute it would tell me in my in my response file um, you know lines two through nine erred uh, and this is why it'll say requires category attribute and I'll let it list it and I will show you I will purposely make a mistake in my feed here uh, just to show you so let's take away the manufacturer name and a title for my for line nine just so I can show you uh, how to submit um, the feed for validation and you can check it and that's it so for category ID 77 I need color I need gender I need size and if you're doing this for a different category you need to find what the uh, square brackets are and do those and if you want the drop-down menus you simply use the uh, the ones in the the brace the braces or fancy bracket so let's go ahead and save this feed and let's go ahead find my test one and I said I was gonna take away the manufacturer name and title so let's save this and let's go to my seller tools all right upload or you're gonna to want to go to validate new SKU feed if you're unable to upload new SKUs um, you need to send those to us for review and then we submit them for processing we just um, check them for um, you know appropriate titles we want to make sure um, you're not um, your punctuation's good you're not using all caps uh, stuff like that so you need to submit your feeds to us and we um, process them but you're able to validate them to see if they're gonna error when we get them so those this will just save time um, so you don't send the feed to us wait for us to, to validate it and then send it back to you um, so go ahead and find the file you saved open and then hit submit file for validation uh, this takes a little bit of time whoops so as you can see here I uploaded dot XLS and it says your in or your uploaded file is a binary file um, it's not supported now I skipped a very important step which is I'm glad I did that on accident uh, because you have to save your files in the text tab delimited uh, format so you're gonna want to go to Excel save as save as type text tab delimited and hit save that's very very important because as you can see I tried to upload one that wasn't that format and it said no so let's try this again new SKU file to be validated find the product dot txt version open submit for validation uh, this doesn't take too long uh, if you have a lot of if your feed is really big and you have a lot of uh, things you're submitting it may take longer to validate it I only have eight so it shouldn't take too long um, let's just hope it doesn't take that long so you don't have to sit through too much awkward silence Perfect, there it is. Gonna to want to download the error log and open it up. And you'll see here it would have failed if you sent this to us for um, review and processing because on line nine, as you can see here, the required field manufacturer name and title it was expected and it's not there. So you say, oh, okay, let's go back to my feed line 9 here it is manufacturer name oh no I didn't put Brooks 
and then what else did it say? It said title. Oh, oh no, there's no title. Add that, save it, and let's try it again. Browse it, find the file, and wait for the awkward silence again. And if you ever have any questions or you're confused, um, just please email us. We'll be happy to help you. This video is here to um, help the majority of the people doing the product sets. Um, you know, there there probably will be um, some questions or something I didn't go over in enough detail in the video. So if you have any questions, please email us, and we'll be happy to help you. So perfect. The error log is finished. Let's go ahead and click on it and perfect result successful no errors so what you would do now is email this file to uh, mpsuccess at marketplace at rakuten.com i'll have that in the link below um, and once we get it we will review the file review the feed and then submit it for um for processing then two hours after we submit it it gets created in our system in our product catalog, and then you would submit an inventory feed uh, to attach yourself to these products. Now, if you submit an inventory feed, um, if if you submit the inventory feed, there are three um, popular ways to attach yourself to products. One is the Rakuten.com shopping SKU, one is a UPC, and another is seller SKU. Now, in this example, you can see I don't have UPCs so I wouldn't want to attach via UPC because it doesn't exist. You could attach Rakuten.com shopping SKU, but you don't know what, what the Rakuten.com shopping SKU is yet. So the most popular way when people have um, new SKU feeds and they don't have UPCs is view, um, through the seller SKU. So you would attach, you would send in a UPC, I'm um, sorry, an inventory feed and using the seller SKU as the product ID type. And if you don't know how to do an inventory feed, lucky for you, I have a video going over how to do that. Um, so if you need to find that video, you can look through the channel and find it, or ask us and we can send it to you. And that should conclude the video. Um, it's very important to check the response files um, or validate your new SKU feed and check the response file, because that will um, save you a lot of time of back and forth. Um, and that should do it. So if you have any questions, please email your ECC or our MP success team. And I will have the email in the description below. Thank you for watching.